Welcome to the Ozeki Woipsip SDK tutorial part 3. In the last tutorial we have created a graphical user interface for our soft phone and now all of our buttons are functioning so we can accept and make calls. In this tutorial we are going to add a status display to our already existing soft phone which will provide various informations about the calls and the phone line. After that we will create buttons for special cases like redialing the last call's number, putting the call on hold and taking the call off hold or transferring that. The status display will be represented with a test box and I am renaming it to TB display. The TB is from the test box. We will show the main events in this little display like when our phone is ringing. Please note that our phone call interfaces object will give us both communicating parties as a string separated with a semicolon. So if we would like to see only our number, for example, we can write a parser method for this purpose. I choose this way. This method will split our string to two parts by the semicolon and stores it into a string array. The indexing of an array starts with zero and we want the second string as an integer, so we can get our string this way. And now we can get the caller's number by passing this object. We would also like to be notified when an error occurs, when the call state is being changed, for example if we are in a call. We want to see nothing when the call ends. If we are dialing, we want to see the numbers in this text box and we want to clear it whenever the hang up button is being pressed. And of course, we want to see if the phone is offline. Let's check our display. We can see the displayed messages and we can also see that our ringing with the caller's number is being replaced with the call state's ringing message. It is not a problem for us. We saw two ways to display an incoming call and we will use our parser method for other purpose soon. So we are ready to take our next step and to create some new functions with zip call control. We are creating three buttons, a redial, a hold, unhold and a transfer one. Let's start with the redial function. For this we will need a string variable to store our last caller or our last dial number. Let's call it redial number. At the soft phone's initialization the string must be empty. When we have an incoming call we store the caller's number to our string by the help of our previously written parser method. In the second hand we want to store our last dial so at the pickup buttons event we are storing the dialed number. If we are done with these we just have to write the click event. If we have no number to dial or we have an active call we do nothing. We must create a new call object and we must wire up the call events and then we can start the recall. Let's try this function. If we start with pressing the redial button nothing will happen. Let's say we have a missed call, we just have to click the redial button to call back the other client and even if we forgot to tell something important, we can recall the client again and again. We would like to be able to put the call on hold and to take the call off hold. For this we need two boolean variables to aid us. The local health shows if we are holding a call and the first in call state signs if we have already attached our media handlers to the call. At the soft phone's initialization the local health variable is false, the first in call state variable is true. If the call is being answered, our hold button is available to use. With the help of our first in call state variable we make sure about we are attaching the media handlers only once. When we take the call off hold, we enter into the call again. 
This case can be handled with the in-call call state. We just need to enable the holding function and to start the microphone and the speaker again. When the call ends, we set the variables back to their previous states. When we put the call on hold, we should stop our devices. Now let's write the click event to our hold button. We need to check if we are in a call or not. If we want to hold a call, we must be in a call. If the local held variable is false, then we put the call on hold and the button's text should change to unhold. We need to set the local held variable to true. If the local held variable is true, we set that to false and we need to unhold the call. This will do the job. Let's try this function. I am dialing our soft phone and I am picking up the call. I press the hold button and now we are hearing some kind of music and our media devices are turned off. If I press the unhold button, I am ready to communicate again. You can check the details in our logger list box on the left. Okay, the next step is the call transfer. To transfer a call, there are several possibilities, for example, the blind transfer and the attended transfer methods. We will try the blind transfer one. We are telling our soft phone from the source code that who is the destination client for the transfer. If there is no active call, the button should do nothing. As you could see it in this tutorial, after you have created a universal soft phone, adding a function to it with Ozeki Voipsip SD key is really fast and easy. To transfer a call, we just need to use one line of code. Let's try this function. If I call my Briar phone and I pick up the call, I am able to transfer to my other soft phone. It's also recommended to use the text boxes text at the pickup buttons event when you would like to start a call, since from this tutorial we are using this instead of the label. You can also remove that label from your soft phone, or you can use that for something else, like to display the phone's number. There are a lot of examples, tutorials and information about the SD key, PBX, soft phones and a lot of other tools and things on the www.voip-sip-sdkey.com website. Feel free to browse and practice. For more information please visit www.voip-sip-sdkey.com or contact us at info at voip-sip-sdkey.com Thank you for watching.